Bob Mill. Ladies and gentlemen, members of parliament, thousands of children are right now in that situation. Someone is choosing without even knowing them whether they are going to live or die. That someone is their mother. And that choice is abortion. Every day, 115,000 children are being put to death through abortion. 115,000. Look around you at this great sea of people. This is only about 10,000 people. Every two hours, this amount of children are being killed because of abortion. Almost one third of our generation never made it out of the womb. All those lives are now gone. All that potential, gone. And all that hope and future, gone. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. It's not really killing. After all, a fetus isn't a child, right? But why do we think that just because a fetus can't talk or do what we do, it isn't a human being yet? The word fetus, comes from the Latin word meaning young one or young child. Some babies are born after only five months. Is this baby not human? We would never say that. Yet, abortions are performed on five-month-old fetuses all the time. In fact, in Canada, fetuses can be aborted at any stage during a pregnancy. Could it be that we only call them humans if they're wanted? No, fetuses are definitely humans, knit together in their mother's womb by their wonderful creator. Some people might say that since there are no laws against abortion in Canada, it doesn't matter anymore. The matter's settled and it's not our business. But if an action is unjust, it should be illegal and it needs to be our business. And this particular action has a huge impact on our society. Every year, 100,000 abortions happen in Canada. One million abortions happen in the USA. And over 42 million abortions happen worldwide. I'd say that's a huge impact. I know some people say the mother has a right to abort. After all, her life is dramatically impacted by having a baby. But I'm asking you to think about the child's rights that were never given to it. No matter what rights the mother has, it doesn't mean we can deny the rights of the fetus. Or what about the people that say a mother shouldn't have to bring a handicapped person into the world? Our society has really bought into this one. Statistics show that in Canada, over 90% of abortions are because of Down syndrome. What doesn't make sense to me is that on the one hand, we provide special parking and elevators for the handicapped. We sponsor the Special Olympics, speaking of the joy they are to us and how they inspire us. But when we find out that a pregnant woman is carrying one of these very children, we counsel her to abort it, not giving the child a second thought. And it's not only the handicapped children that are targeted. In Bombay, out of 8,000 
Wilson pregnancy test, which indicated that the baby was a female, only one of the babies lived. As for the rest, the mother exercised her choice. They were aborted, killed. Talking about the mother's choice, the mother may have had a choice not to have unprotected sex in the first place. We must remember that with our rights and with our choices come responsibilities. And we can't take away someone else's rights to avoid our responsibilities. At this point, I imagine the age old question arises. What if the mother didn't choose to have sex? What if she was raped? But let's look at the facts. Only 1% of all abortions are hard case categories. This includes rape, incest, and the life of the mother being in danger. 1%. That hardly justifies the disturbing volume of abortions that happen these days. And who's to say abortion's the easy way out? I don't think people understand the effects of abortion on a woman. Think about this. According to a recent study, 48% of women who have abortions face complications in their subsequent pregnancies. Some may not even be able to give birth at all. Women are also at a greater risk of developing breast cancer if they have had an abortion. But perhaps the worst effects are the emotional ones. Women who have abortions tend to have more mood disorders, substantial enough to provoke them to harm themselves. In addition, women are five times more likely to have problems with drug and alcohol abuse. 98% of women who have abortions say they would not recommend it to a friend. And 80% of them say they would have carried the baby to full term with better circumstances or more support from others. Abortion leaves a woman feeling lost and uncertain about her future. More than half of all women who have abortions feel guilt, shame, sorrow, regret, and unworthiness afterwards. It certainly isn't the cure-all people think it is. I read a story on the Focus on the Family website. It was about a girl who had an abortion, and she writes, I had an abortion at the age of 17, and it was the worst thing I ever did. I would never recommend it to anyone because it comes back to haunt you. When I tried having children, I lost three because something happened to my cervix during the abortion. Sharon Osborne. Hers is just one of the many heart-wrenching stories that nobody tells these days. And those same stories are the ones that we need to hear. I want to thank you for taking time to think about the issue of abortion to think about the unborn, and to think about the effects of abortion on a woman. If you walk away with anything after this speech, walk away with the words of Horton. You know him, the elephant that risked his life to save that little speck. Remember him and his famous words. Even though you can't hear them or see them at all, a person's a person, no matter how small. Thank you.